All right, so here we are looking at our three-color multi-channel logo that we created last week inside Photoshop. And the first thing I want you to notice about it is because it's a multi-channel document versus RGB or CMYK that we have no layers. We just have the flat background and nothing more. Not only that, everything inside the layers panel is dimmed. We can't even create a new layer or a new group or anything. And that is the limitation you run into when you're working with spot colors inside Photoshop. If you want to get access to your colors, you therefore have to switch to the channels panel, at which point you can turn off all but one channel to see it represented in black and white. So this is the contents of that turquoise channel. And so anything that's black is going to print in Pantone 3252. Anything that's white is going to receive no ink whatsoever. And then if I click on a Pantone 285 channel, I see the contents of that layer represented in black and white. And the same goes if I click on the Pantone black channel. If I then want to see the entire image in color, I need to turn all the channels back on. Now I want you to take note of what we're seeing up here in the title tab. Notice that it's telling us blended spot colors.psd. That's the file name. And then we're seeing the zoom ratio, which happens to be 25%. And then we're seeing the active channel, which is Pantone Black 6. And we're going to see all that stuff listed in the final PDF file. There's nothing we can do about that except delete that information later inside Acrobat. Okay, the next thing that we need to do before exporting the PDF file is to go up to the image menu and choose the image size command so that we can get a sense for how big this image is. Now, the reason we're not seeing a preview over here on the left-hand side inside Photoshop CC is that we are too far zoomed in so that we are seeing just the central portion of the rocket. All right, now I'm going to switch my width and height values to, let's say, inches. And note that we're not getting round numbers. We've got some weird decimals going on. And that's because this specific document is more easily measured in points. So I'll go ahead and switch to points, which are 170 seconds of an inch, at which point we see that the width value is 964 roughly points and the height is 672. So what you want to do is jot that information down and then just cancel out of this dialog box. And the reason we need to know that info is so we can decide how big the PDF file needs to be. Now to create the PDF file, you go to the file menu, you don't choose the export command. Instead, you choose the print command. All right, now you can see that my printer is currently set to an Epson R3000 inkjet that's in the office. I want to switch it to Adobe PDF. You do as well. And notice that the logo isn't fitting properly into the page. And normally it'd be tempting to either change the orientation up here by clicking on the second layout icon or change these scaling values in a position and size section. But you don't want to do either of those things. Because you're working with a PDF file, you can make it any size you want. Not by changing any settings down in this lower region of the dialog box, but rather by clicking on the Print Settings button. And then notice that we've got this option that says Adobe PDF Page Size. It may be found in a different location on the Mac but it's probably going to be set to letter or A4 by default. You want to create your own custom size by clicking on the Add button. Then inside this custom paper size dialog box, set the unit to point, and then just go ahead and dial in those width and height values we wrote down a moment ago, 964 for the width and 672 for the height. Now I want to add 100 more points to accommodate the printer marks. So I'm going to change that 9 to a 10, and I'm going to change that 6 to a 7. So our page size is now 1074 points wide and 772 points tall. And I'm going to name this size after the numbers. Seems like the best way to go. So I'll just call it 1064 by 772, and I'll click the Add Modify button in order to add that page size, then just make sure it's selected. And you don't have to do anything else here, but click OK. And now notice we have more than enough room for our logo. All right, now go ahead and twirl close position and size and twirl open printing marks and turn all of these check marks on. And for description, what I recommend you do is click on the edit menu and then go ahead and type something in there about you or your company. You might want to have a phone number and email address as well, just so that the commercial printer can contact you once the job is done. Then go ahead and click OK, and that will be added as a description to the page. Finally, you want to twirl open color management up here at the top. Don't worry about any of these warnings. 
all you need to do is change color handling to separations, and that will print each one of your channels on an independent page. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and click print in order to save the document, and I'll save over the one that I've created in advance by clicking the save button followed by yes. And then you can see that Photoshop goes ahead and creates the document and in my case opens it inside of Acrobat. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to my document by clicking on this big plus button here. And notice that it says right here at the top of the page, blended spot colors.psd at 25%. Isn't that helpful? You know now how I was looking at the document inside Photoshop, followed by Pantone Black 6C, which is actually not the name of this separation. It's actually the separation for Pantone 3252. So what we have is a labeling problem, and here's how to take care of it. Go ahead and select this guy right there, the Edit Text and Images tool. And Acrobat, if you're using it, may come up with a warning telling you that it can't find any editable text, in which case just go ahead and click OK. And then you want to click on that item right there. And to delete it, you can either go to the Edit menu and choose the Delete command, or you can press Control Backspace here on a PC or Command Delete on a Mac. And that will get rid of that misleading message so that you can see that the actual separation is 3252. Then advance to the next page so that we can do the same thing by clicking on this down arrow icon in the upper left region of the window. And note that this is indeed the separation for Pantone 285. But if I scroll over to the left, you can see that Photoshop has gone ahead and included the title with that misleading title information after the at sign. So just go ahead and click on that guy as well with the same tool and press Control Backspace or Command Delete on the Mac and then advance to the final page and do that same thing. Go ahead and click on its title, which in our case is right because we had the black channel selected. But let's still get rid of it by pressing Control Backspace or Command Delete on the Mac because after all, we already have the proper information over here in the upper right hand corner. And you can move it around to a different location if you want to, if you don't like where it is. But I prefer to leave them where they are so that they're all aligned with each other. And now I'm going to press Control minus a few times or Command minus on the Mac in order to zoom out. And I also want you to see down here at the bottom of the page that it does say, please return to Type and Graphics Inc. That's what I typed in. In your case, it might say your name, your phone number, your email address, and so forth. All right, now, of course, we want to save our changes by going up to the File menu and choosing the Save command. And we now have a universally compatible PDF file that we can turn over to a commercial printer and expect to print in three and only three industry standard Pantone spot color inks.